welcome back to my channel and it's by Mandy. My name is Amanda and today we have the continuation of my knit flip series. Last video I talked about a few of my plans to upgrading a few of my hand knit objects and now it's time to get to work. We'll get into all the upgrades that I'm making what I'm working on. I'm kind of tackling them all at once. There is no system, there is no method to my madness. And I think you'll see that reflected in the order of which I do things. What I have started on so far is frogging my Whitmore cardigan. Gasp. A lot of people were telling me not to frog it. Some people said I should give it as a gift. To be honest, I don't know anyone in my life that wanted it as a gift and I wasn't ready to part with the yarn yet i decided to frog it i've also never frogged a sweater and i kind of weirdly wanted to to see what it was like and i was fine it felt good it was exciting the process itself was a little sticky and tricky at times and i'll walk you through that with some footage that i took i started with frogging the cardigan by putting it in my freezer i ended up leaving it in there for like three days by the time i ended up getting to it however i do think that i kind of messed things up almost instantly by trying the sweater on to get some footage like of some like before pictures and so my body heat definitely warmed up the sweater a little bit and I also frogged the sweater over the course of a day so obviously it did not stay cold all day and I think it really only works right when you take it out go ahead little woman it's like a door to heaven as I was saying it got a little tricky and it got a little sticky I think it only works well when it's really cold out of the freezer and it's very sunny like in my office so I think it was just it was not ideal conditions I was already dreading kind of frogging mohair and wool held together so I decided not to be delicate and did not pick apart the sewn bind off I just cut it off and that part is a little tricky when you're cutting because you obviously don't get like one place to pull from the yarn so that was a little tricky getting started and then going through the ribbing was just a little tricky because of the texture I think it's a little harder to frog ribbing from what I found and then once we got past the ribbing it was pretty smooth sailing other than when I reached where I joined a new ball of yarn. I didn't split spice when I was doing this and I ended up just knitting like a few stitches with both of the yarns held together which was fine but a little tricky when frogging especially with two yarns because then you have a lot of kind of extra joins. So what I ended up doing was I magic knotted uh, some of the segments together because I was coming up with some really kind of smaller skeins and I didn't want to have a bunch of tiny skeins. I ended up magic knotting them together and I think what I'll end up doing we'll see because of how the lento uh, is gauge is I don't think magic knots will look good so I'm will probably just like cut at the knots and then overlap and do the same technique that I did last time or I could split splice but like split splicing mohair I don't know I don't think it works that well so that you can't do it at all I'm pretty sure I don't work with mohair that much for good reason I don't think I will continue to after I make this sweater as that goes I got to the point where I unwound the entire thing. I did the same thing for the sleeves. Frogging a bottom down sweater, you may want to frog your sleeves first. I didn't think about that because I frogged the whole body and then I got to where the arms were and then I couldn't go any further and I had to stop, frog the sleeves and then go back to the body. It ended up being fine. I think it also just ended up for a little, some shorter balls of yarn which I'm not too worried about. I had this sweater and knitted up for about a year, so the yarn was extremely crinkly when I got it out. And I'd actually just seen Amy of Knee Knits frog her Whitmore cardigan, and she had tried both steaming and wet blocking, or just like soaking the yarn. I don't think you block yarn, you just kind of wash it. She tried steaming it and just soaking it, and although I think steaming took more time than intended, and actually it's I think easier for me just to wash things so that's how I did it I washed them like I would block a knit in like cold I really tried to keep it on the colder side of room temperature with some wool wash and I pressed all the extra water out and let everything hang to dry it was not a fun experience I would not recommend it but it's done and it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think it'd be really awful if I had to separate the mohair from the wool, which was something that I could just not be arsed to do. And I don't know why I have started taking that up in my vocabulary of saying I just can't be arsed, but like, 
That's such a good saying. Oh my God, they really popped off with that one. Not be arsed to do that. So now where I am at now, I have all of these dry skeins of yarn that need to be wound up that I've been dreading doing, but I can't just have these loops of yarn hanging around my house. And I guess I could twist them up, but it's we're putting them to use, we're knitting them. So I'm gonna wind them up today. And I also have some other parts of the projects that I'm working on today. Again, I'm not doing everything sequentially. I'm just not working like that. I, I decided just to do it all at once. The other two things that I did with my other projects were, were extending my very V-neck raglan here. And I ordered an extra ball of the Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo in color way S1. That got upside down. And here's what it looks like in the ball. Honestly, it looks way less exciting in the ball than I feel like it does knit up. But I'm very excited to do some sweater rehab on this guy, add some length. I'm undecided if I want to go in and redo the neckline. We'll see. This is kind of the least exciting project to me because it just doesn't sound that sexy or fun. Like putting in a lifeline and like adding a few inches and re-knitting ribbing. Like I'll do it, but I'm not like jazzed about it. So I feel like I'll wait a little bit for this one, but that is what I have planned and ready for that. The last thing is my Ingrid top. This is what I have. I bought two writ dies and we are just gonna like truly F around and find out with dyeing and over dyeing. I really don't know what I'm doing, but you really should just, I'll watch a few tutorials and we'll, we'll try. I bought these two writ colors. This isn't sponsored, but this is teal and everything, everything blue? Everything blue. It's not like an everything bagel. Teal and evening blue. And I think we might make a cool dark teal bluish greenish color with these dyes again. We'll see, I don't really know what I'm doing. Anything will be better than this. So we can only go up. Even if it just gets a little darker, I think I'll be happy. Those are my plans. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get started today. I, it's a Sunday. I like did all my schoolwork yesterday so I can just like focus on knitting and I'm very excited. So let's get to winding yarn. After all of my cutting and like pulling things out, you do end up with a little bit of yarn waste. This is how much I have left after all of that. To me, this isn't like a monumental amount of waste. And what I do is I do save these scraps and I'll probably make another scrappy pillow or something down the line. Um, or like even maybe like a stuffed animal or something. Like I, I save all my little cuttings, like a little pack rat, and I have been able to successfully reuse them in the pack in the past. So it doesn't really feel like a waste to me if it saves me a little mental, a little mental strife in the end. So that's how much waste I ended up with. Not horrible. Let's get started. I haven't started Summer House, so I think I'm gonna do that while I wind yarn to make it a little more enjoyable. Some. I was winding them on two different sized chairs. So I have some very small ones that also don't have a lot of yarn in them. So I think I'm just going to hand wind these to finish out the process. And I am like, I'm so over mohair y'all. I'm over this. There's like fuzz everywhere. I can't, I'm done. But I'll have one more nice mohair sweater at the end of this and then I'll never have to knit with it ever again. So. 
think once I get knitting, I think I will enjoy it more, but it's just like the everything else about it that makes it so not fun. We'll finish. Summer House is looking like it's going to be good. I I'm just watching the first episode now. That's how I'm behind I am on like the other interests in my life as well. So I'm really busy. Anyway, we'll finish this up. So we're in my kitchen. We are going to get started. The things that you will need for dyeing, as far as I understand it, are a container to dye in that you don't eat out of. I don't have a plug for my sink or else I might do that. I clean out a waste basket. I don't care if you think that's gross. Like, that's what I had available to me. I cleaned it well. I cleaned it out. Cleaner's right here for evidence. And then you'll need gloves, from what I understand. I only have white ones, so we'll see how that goes. You'll need your dye. Depending on your bath, you'll need salt or vinegar because this is cotton and linen. I'm gonna put in a cup of salt with the dye bath. And then I think I can do a test strip with some paper towels as well. I think that's everything you need. We'll find out more as we keep going. And I'm gonna make sure I know the dye instructions and take you along with me. I switched this to Celsius and I didn't realize and I was like, it got colder, how is it 54 degrees? It's about 130 right now. They recommend 140, so I'm boiling some more water and covering it in the meantime. The calls for me is using a cup and a half of the teal and then two tablespoons of the evening blue. I will start there and see how it looks and then maybe I'll add like another teaspoon of the evening blue and we'll see. Um, the other thing it does say is to shake it and then to add a teaspoon of liquid dish detergent, which, I don't think I have. I've I've Dawn. Is that what they mean? I don't think so. So I think I might just skip that. I'm like a witch right now. I feel like double bubble boil in trouble. Okay, so I just put the dyes in. They said one like one and a half bottles, like a half a bottle, but one cup looked like more than half the bottle, so uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna mix this and do a test strip and see what it looks like. Hmm. It's not really what I was going for. Put the rest of the teal in there or more blue? Both? Let's do both. Oh, and that's a whole bottle, okay. And maybe like, might regret this let's see let's just send it i think because i don't want it to get any more blue than this and it still looks a little tealy green at least it looks very blue on camera but there's a little greenness to it on in real life so let's dunk and then i have to mix this for 30 minutes well ingrid we loved you you were a good top you'll be even better oh my god this is totally akatar coated this is totally nesta going into the cauldron Am I right, guys? Hopefully she doesn't take something from them. All right. Oh, that was a hair. So what I need to do now is continuously stir for 30 minutes. So I'm going to stand here with my acupressure sandals and watch Summer House and cook my shirt. <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. Okay, no, you, you can't. It, no, please. No. Okay. She ran away. She loves just to be in the kitchen when we're in the kitchen. And... Mommy's making a brew. Please. Okay, it's been going. Also, we'll just check in. It's been going for like... Mm, 10 minutes. Not even. And like, this is really cool. I feel it, I think it'll lighten. If it doesn't, I'm okay. I think I really like this like denimish color. I wish maybe it was a little more greeny. It looks very dark on camera, but this isn't the finished color yet. So we'll see. <laughs>
phone's about to die, so I want to do this quickly. I rinsed everything in cold water. I let it soak for about 30 minutes, and it was like dark, deep blue when I took it out, and now it has more of a tealy green feeling. The sliding is garbage, but I'm not moving this around my house because it's a soaking wet piece of clothing. Um, but yeah, it's giving teal-ish, kind of. Yeah, see, that was a bad idea. Um, there's water all over my floor. <laughs> It's giving tealy. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into, oh, I thought this was rinsing clear, but we might need to give it some more rinses. Rinse till clear with cold water and then wash it with warm water with an old towel with a little bit of detergent. I'm gonna do that on the delicate cycle. The only thing I am worried about is I spent so much time reworking the shirt to make it smaller because it was too big. But now with all of like the working of the fabric and like the soaking of the cotton in hot water, I'm afraid it's gonna grow. However, I think I can mitigate that with throwing it in the dryer because it's cotton and linen. So anyway, last thing is I think what will be really cool is that in this yarn, it's a cotton linen blend with I think a thread of either like polyamide or a viscose that like holds them together. And so it'll have that dimensionality because that little th thread is lighter than the yarn fiber and it's like shiny. So I'm already seeing that dimensionality. You really can't tell from this shot, but it's there and we'll show you later. <laughs> so into the washer, this goes. A couple days later, the shirt has had a time to dry and here is what the final product looks like. I'm really happy with this. This is closer to the color than I thought we were going to get. And even if you look at, I'll throw up like the swatch on the RIT website, like it looks very similar, which is surprising for something that has been over dyed. So I'm very excited about this. I think the color is just like more vibrant and fun and I love that it's teal. I don't own anything this color. I remember like loving teal when I was like a teenager. <laughs> Everything was teal and lime green and like this is kind of evocative of that for me. And I'll bring you closer to what the fabric looks like. You can see in those like, it's either that or the viscose like strand that looks quite nice, like it's lighter and I like that. Very happy with how this turned out. It was a really easy process overall. I think the thing that took the longest was rinsing it. I mean, other than like stirring it for 30 minutes, rinsing it until the water ran clear. Like compared to when I pulled it right out of the bath then compared to when I dried it, like this is considerably lighter, but this was what I was going for. So all in all, I think it worked out and we can officially mark like project one, done it is off the board and we have two more things to work on which will take a little bit longer i went ahead and i started my lento sweater as well and in the planning video i believe i talked about wanting to do a two by two rib and then i started it and to me what i'm hoping for this sweater is that it'll be kind of like a spring sweater and I'm feeling with a two by two double folded collar, it's not going to feel as springy. It will make it feel a little more like bulky and wintry. So I think I'm going to rip this. And then I also think I'm just going to opt for a single one by one. I'm used to doing like drop shoulders and things where you put the collar on last. And I feel like I prefer that because like, you just like don't know how this is gonna lay until you have like half of a sweater done. And I know I think I could technically start with the raglan. I am a little bit nervous about how picking up stitches would go for the lento because it's knit on six millimeters and then the ribbing's in four millimeter needles. So I think I'm just gonna unfrog this, rip frogging more mohair, but this should be okay. And then cast back on and knit in one by one rib and i'll work on that this week as well so that's where we are so far in making <laughs> it's the next day i'm in the same shirt but i feel like i've remedied the issue that i had i ended up doing the one by one folded as suggested pattern does recommend that you do a 
provisional cast on and I just decided to not do that and I just folded it over and I think it looks fine. I kind of prefer doing it that way. I don't know if there's a reason why. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get some progress before I really get zooming on the yoke because I have a feeling it's going to go really quickly. And something's really nice about working on this big size of needle, but like the yarn is so light, so I feel like my hands won't get tired as quickly. Let's see, so this is the progress so far. April. I'm here with an update and I have a little fun thing to share. I painted this mug at a pottery place for my birthday. I'm very excited with it. I think I did the brown stripes too big, but I'm not a painter. I'm a knitter. That's something fun, I guess, mostly for me. And I honestly, this month have had one foot in my knitting and in between school and work, but then the other thing that's taking up my time also is that stardew valley which is like a, a game came a video game <laughs> came out with an update with like all this new content and i had to start a new save file and i've been i have like 40 hours on that save file already <laughs> i've also been doing that which has been taking up my time i have been slowly working on this i am at the point in the pattern I'm knitting the size two by the way that says to split um i have like the right amount of stitches however i think i'm gonna add one or two increased rounds like this is like just to see and to kind of show you how out of it i've been i feel like i've had everything on the scrunched up needle like i haven't i think there's a project on my largest needle i just like cannot be arsed to get my largest cable i'm talking about my cable my largest cable free to put this on could not be arsed um so this is what we're working with and i'm just being realistic this is what i'm doing and this is what we look like so far. I have to say, I love the fabric that this is knitting compared to what it felt like on the Whitmore cardigan, where this is like, I mean, the stitches are much bigger. It feels airier. I hope it will lend to a somewhat cooler of a sweater. And I'm happy with how the collar looks. I think I like my choice with doing one by one. And... I mean, following the pattern, my choice of following the pattern. Good choice, good choice. And um, yeah, overall, I'm excited about it. It it was so cold and gross, and now it's finally getting nice, and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to wear this, but I wanna finish it. I wanna finish my um, all these projects that I've started because my big project that I think I wanna work on this summer is the Stella Quilt Blanket, and I've been slowly but surely spending way too much money buying mini sets um mostly from sorella but i also ordered some from sunday fiber co and i'm very excited however <laughs> it's kind of expensive so i've decided like i'm at least telling myself I'm gonna try to knit from stash as much as much as i can i have a lot of summer fibers that i haven't used i have a whole freaking stash of knitting for olive pure silk <laughs> if you remember my dress saga from last year so anyway that's where i'm at and then i also think for this video we will split sleeves and i'm gonna stop it there and we will go to meet you in the next video i like need to get this edited it's kind of been looming over my head like the longer the more time that goes on it's like uh this is a task that i'll have to do which i never want to feel that way but sometimes i think just getting back into it you gotta rip the band-aid off so last thing that i forgot to mention about the yarn and the gauge say if i was gonna knit this sweater for the first time and i and i decided to wind the mohair and the wool together um like preemptively they they that is encouraged the powers that be the royal we the royal they the knitting deities it's not encouraged for you to do that because that messes up that messes up the gauge of both those yarns and i didn't get exactly what that meant i was like okay i just know that i shouldn't do that but 
As we know, I did not separate these because I don't have a death wish. What will happen is this in your knittings or in your yarn. Mostly what's happening for me is that the, like the fingering weight is longer. And so I guess it's knitting up quicker than the mohair because it's thicker. And so then I kind of have this like excess. So I'll be like pulling the yarn and what I'll do is each time I kind of just keep pulling it and then you still end up like it's not perfectly matched the whole time. So I'll just flag that. It hasn't been that bad for me to remedy. Sometimes it is just easier to kind of like cut the mohair or cut the wool and then restart um, if it's getting really bad. But overall, it hasn't been that hard to work with um, so far. But yeah, it's a, like a little annoying. It's not like ideal, obviously, than if I just had two, a ball of mohair and a ball of wool, but it's not annoying enough that I would recommend separating your mohair and wool if you don't want to. <laughs> If you really want to, if you want the challenge, go ahead that I do not. So that's the other thing I wanted to mention. I have lived 100 lifetimes since I last filmed for this vlog. I was sick in the last clip. I'm sick in this one. That one was like a week and a half ago. And then I got unsick and then I got re-sick again and I developed a sinus infection, which I'm sure you can hear. And I got an antibiotic and oh boy is that making my stomach do weird things. I haven't been this sick since I got COVID two years ago and this was just like another thing that like got in the way of me knitting and I'm just like kind of over not having as much time for knitting and content creation because as I was editing this video, it's like edited, I just have to add this clip. I was like, damn, this was fun. And I wish there was just more to show and share but there really isn't. So I am gonna work, I think, on a podcast episode this weekend, but in the part two of this vlog series, but I'm still here. I'm still posting, but it's just a little slower. And I don't like being sick. Who likes being sick? I like being sick for like the first day because then like you get to take work off and like my boyfriend will like do things for me. And like my boyfriend's still doing things for me because he's nice, but it's just like, okay. Like I would like to be back in my routine and like not even just like soup. I haven't had coffee for a week. That's really messing with me mentally. I think I'm gonna be brave and have coffee tomorrow. You know, when you're sick, you just don't want coffee. But I like, I, okay. Anyway, you guys don't care. This is what we have on the sweater. I tried it on yesterday night in another equally badly lit video. And um, I'm happy with how it's looking so far. I wanted a little bit more positive ease. Uh, at least that's what I remember when I first started this sweater, what feels like centuries ago. And I'm digging it so far. I'm really happy. It's also getting really warm here. So like this is kind of the last thing I want to be putting on my body, but I do think I'm going to have to like muscle my way through this. I'm just going to do it. Um, and to get through the body, we have already a fair bit going and it is pretty easy because it's stuck in it. So anyway, that's where we're at and catch up with me in the next video where I finish the sweater. I will be also redoing my very V neck raglan and, uh, you'll get to see maybe me try on the Ingrid top, like, as a real person. So that's exciting. So thank you again for tuning in and I will see y'all soon. Bye.